good morning to all present over here uh, today is the fifth day of the national webinar on sustainable agriculture through national job resource management uh, today's speaker is mr newland matt newland he is a senior carbon agronomist in the institute of fertech melbourne australia uh, he has a uh, 25 year experience working in different uh, agricultural uh, like uh, horticulture dairy beef sheep and cropping industries and different project management he is also work in different countries like australia singapore and malaysia uh, he is uh, today deliver his topic on carbon system agronomy presentation in his presentation he he, he will present it Uh, the importance of soil water tissue and statistics repeating the information about to farmers understand exactly what is required some key tools and equipment used in the field for testing basic on how liquid fertilizer enter and work inside the plants mineral element relationships high breaks in foods some key example of photos and outcome when you get the crop nutrition right and what will happen if you get the crop nutrition wrong so i am highly uh, i am uh, introduce matt newland and i am requested to matt newland to uh, uh, start his presentation welcome mr mr matt newland it's my immense pleasure that uh, and i am also highly thankful to you to accept our invitation and you are ready to deliver the lecture so on behalf of organizing committee and in the presence of our respected team dr kg patel sir uh, with his due permission i am inviting you to deliver your lecture thank you dr patel um, can you hear me okay yes okay fantastic Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. And yeah, that should be up on your screen, I think. You can see the um, presentation. This share share your screen, Mr. Bash Bluland. Yeah. Share your screen. Yeah, start your presentation, sir. Yes, is that up? Yes, yes, yes. We got it. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, so you can see the presentation now. Yes. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Well, thank you for the uh, the opportunity, Dr. Patel, to um, to present at this um, pretty important event that you have in India this year. Um, most welcome. Uh, carbon systems agronomy is a very different form of agronomy to conventional agriculture. We do use conventional inputs. We also use uh, biologic inputs. We use organic inputs, and we use what is best available um, for the farmer, as it's the farmer's own agronomy. <clears throat> we are empowering farmers to make the correct decisions. It's very important for us uh, consultants to to work with the farmers to get the the best outcomes uh, by understanding first the um, <clears throat> the soil chemistry. It's very important to know what's happening in the soil, understanding the plant physiology. So what crop that we're growing in the soil, whether it's wheat or if it's grass for dairy production or crop of corn, or if we're growing, um, we're trying to produce milk through dairy. We also need to understand the farm's capabilities. So with the soil testing that we do, how much trace elements are in the soil, what the phosphorus levels are, are, are like, how much carbon is in the soil, how much labile carbon is ready to go. So we need to understand what the soil is physically capable of doing. And then also the farmer's vision. Farmer's vision is very so, um, He might try to build the soil each year incrementally and improve the outcome and do that within his conventional budget or he may decide to spend a lot more and get to where he needs to be a lot quicker and build the soil fertility very quick. 
Um, you also might be in a position the farmer to sell the farm in three or five years time and doesn't want to spend too much on remediation programs and just wants to um, get as high a yield and make as much money as possible before he sells. So everybody's in a different situation. A majority of families like to build soil productivity uh, well in advance. So when the next generation can take over the, the next succession plan, uh, the, it's everything is set up better for the farm and for the family, for their prosperity. So everybody's in a different situation. So it's important to understand where everybody's at before we make any recommendations on programs and products. And a lot of clients that we work with, um, you know, for several years and they're able to demonstrate, um, you know, differences out in the paddock. We do put our signs on the fence so other people that drive past know what's going on and who's working there. Uh, but it's all very important to get the information first, getting all the correct data. So we work very closely with the uh, Southern Cross University in Australia, Environmental Analytical Laboratories, and we do a lot of tissue testing and um, here, for example, a lot of the dry tissue gets put into these tubes after it's been microwaved and they put, they put through different uh, acid digesting um, scenarios. And then we be able to get all of our data from the laboratory for, from tissue testing the plant and soil testing. This is out in the field, soil testing. <clears throat> all the samples arrive at the laboratory, ready to go after they've been dried out. And we, we test uh, quite a different different few different methods uh, which I'll get into more detail soon including a um, an organization with the South Australian uh, Research and Development Institute SADI they're based in Adelaide we can also do DNA soil testing on root and soil diseases prior to the cropping program for that year so if we know that uh, there's certain disease or incidences of, of disease pressure, we're aware of that earlier on and we can plan for that in our programs. So this is an example of once all the data is collected, how we actually put those reports together in a, um, an easy way for the farmers to understand. So we, this is an example of a, a soil test here. And you know, we have all the graphs, which is very easy to see and very easily for the farmer to make a, a connection, a visual connection to what's going on. But then we also have a lot of the data on the left-hand side, <clears throat> even including the total acid extractable, seeing what is not only in the soil, but what is also unavailable to the plant. So we know what to manipulate with the soil and plant chemistry to get the most, the most out of those uh, elements over to the crop. So we have a few pages of testing, for example, then we follow with an extensive report and that's all done in order. So it's very easy for anyone to pick up the report and understand, even if you know farming or not, it's very easy and quick for the farmer to see what's going on and to start basing uh, his decisions on this uh, cropping program. So we give here some examples of the plant physiology, what we're doing, this is an example for wheat. And we've put a program together on what foliar applications to apply, what solid applications to apply to achieve the maximum um, production that he can based off his rainfall in his growing environment. An example here is a, a tissue test result that we, we do all this in-house. We only get the data from the laboratory. So you can see there's not only uh, what's high and low of all the elements, but we also look at the key ratios, I know it's hard to see, I can provide further information after this, but um, the key nutrient ratio ratios like phosphorus to nitrogen, for example, um, phosphorus to potassium, calcium to phosphorus and etc. cetera. And we, the aim of this is to have all these key ratios in balance, not, not red how it is here. We want them all green, ideally. So we then look at the ratios and adjust those ratios appropriately with nutrition and therefore we, uh, we get the, the maximum outcome with a, a minimal input of our product. Fertitech, um, that's one of our main production areas in Western Australia. And we manufacture liquid fertilizers, granular fertilizers, 
um, animal health products, but it's it's mainly us getting out and about and finding what the farmer requires, getting that information to them. So we use a lot of different tools and implements, and you may have seen a penetrometer before for measuring soil compaction and identifying hard pans in the soil's profile. It's also very important. Then we also do a lot of sap testing. Now this can be done in field um, without the necessarily use of a laboratory. If you need some uh, information that is uh, required quite quickly, within three to four minutes, we can uh, explain to the farmer with the plant what, the, what is happening with the sap pH levels, the sap calcium levels, the sap uh, potassium levels. We can test for plant available nitrate and the conductivity, the sodium, the salt, uh, things like electrical conductivity, soil pH. So all these equipment, some of you, you may have seen before, but we all carry these um, with all the visits that we go to on farm. And here is an example of plant physiology that we really need to understand. This is an example in wheat, and this is done through a uh, Commonwealth Department in Australia, CSIRO. And this is some of their work identifying the key stages of uh, wheat production. And when you have that second tiller, that is the ideal time to intervene with nutrition. And it's mainly phosphorus and nitrogen at that point. So you can determine a spikelet in the grain that's as high as possible and as wide as possible. So you can get more yield. Because once the terminal spike at the top, is set, that's the end for the yield. So we need to work out what makes these plants function to determine how much yield we can get out of the plant as much as possible while we're still doing the right thing and building up the, the levels in the soil. This here's an example of uh, 820 parts per million nitrogen um, that we sampled on a crop. We have all different tables for what crop and what levels you need to have for calcium, SAT pH, nitrogen, for example. This is a, um, a, a model of a plant leaf, and it's very important for products to get through and penetrate into the main blood vessel, you could call it the xylem and the phloem. Using products that aren't very water soluble won't find it into the plant very efficiently. You will uh, have a lot of inefficiencies and uh, you might be thinking you're putting product on the plant but um, a lot of the product doesn't actually get into the plant so it's very important to penetrate the leaf and using different technologies for that. So the xylem in the plant is more for uptake of roots so water, moisture, everything coming up through the roots where the phloem is more for foliar application so anything hitting the leaves will come into the flow and it's like an elevator system or lift system. If you have too much of one element, for example, too much copper or, or zinc, then the plant has to cycle through that in order to find more nitrogen or more molybdenum that it needs. So it's very important for products to be formulated in a way that the plants can get everything they need, not just fill the plant up with straight copper because it will uh, stunt the plant for several days before it will clear that blockage, before it can then take in the nitrogen or molybdenum or whatever product it requires. So it's very important to keep things in ratio all the time to keep the plant flowing. Now I appreciate that you're also videoing this too so you'll be able to go back and uh, study these slides in a bit more detail. I'm going to keep moving through pretty quickly because there's many slides and I'm conscious of your time as well. So the stomata is very important. Now these stomata open and close uh, mainly at night and early in the morning. So that's the best time to apply liquid nutrition onto the plants because it will be able to penetrate more more easily and efficiently. Once the stomata are actually closed during the day, it's a lot harder for product to get in. So especially in India, you've got a lot of warm temperatures. In the middle of the day, for farmers, is not the ideal time for applying nutrients on the leaf because the stomata will be mainly closed, if not fully shut, to preserve the, uh, the plant's moisture that doesn't dehydrate. So that's just regulating moisture constantly. So when that stomata is open is the best time to apply uh, foliar liquid nutrition 
And that's usually done early in the mornings or later in the evening, never in the middle of the day, unless it's very cold conditioned, then that, that's okay. So to get into the plant, you need to be smaller than a speck of dust on a dust mite. So it's very, very small to access the sieve tubes in the plant. Therefore, there's a lot of specialty products that are formulated for foliar nutrition. You'll see on this side here, a human hair is quite large, unable to penetrate a plant leaf. But when you start working down, uh, viruses can actually get in plants. A lot of different viruses can get in. But for example, here, zinc oxide is quite a large molecule. It has a lot of trouble getting into a plant efficiently. When you're looking more at zinc sulfates, they're a lot smaller. And the insecticides, the soluble salts, the uh, antibiotics, they're a lot smaller. And some of the technology you can use that's in um, herbicides, the surfactant type of technologies, actually makes it non-negotiable for a plant to accept uh, product. So you need to be out at, at this end of the range, around 20 Daltons, very small, so that you can get into the plant um, efficiently without having any wastage. That's very important. So the nutritional um, antagonists and synergists, some of you may have seen something like this before or something very similar. This is a very basic model. But basically saying if you've got good amounts of molybdenum, that's actually a key synergist for magnesium uptake and availability. And the magnesium then actually helps phosphorus become more available. We've seen a lot of phosphorus problems purely because there's a magnesium deficiency. Once we start to improve the magnesium availability to the plant, the plant will then find more phosphorus and then the cycle goes again. Uh, it's very important to understand that. And for example, calcium, too much calcium will actually antagonise everything. Boron will antagonise zinc. So every time you put a lot of calcium products out, for example, like calcium carbonate or lime, you're actually reducing the effectiveness um, temporarily of all the other trace elements. So therefore sometimes actually compensate putting other trace elements out with the lime so the plant has availability of everything. So for example, if you've got um, very high iron, yeah, iron actually antagonizes phosphorus. It actually antagonizes um, a lot of different things here, as you can see where the arrows go. Now, one of the problems that we have in, in, in dairy production in Victoria is a lot of the, the iron is very high. So how we go about working with that, we actually antagonise the high iron in the soil by throwing additional phosphorus out in a folia, along with copper, manganese and zinc. They're all antagonists towards iron. So if we start to manipulate the plant by, by using these trace elements and applying them in the soil, it can actually manipulate the plant and get very good growth. Even though we have excessive uh, iron in the soil, that will take you know, probably 100 years at least to, to get down to more manageable levels. We have to work with the conditions that we've got. So this is also just going a bit showing an example of the correct time. Timing is critical for getting these applications out, you know, usually in the mornings. A lot of farmers, they're not aware of either, and even salespeople, what they're actually using. Is a product formulated in an amine? Do they use amino acids? Do they use polymers? Do they use organic acids, lignosulfates, organosilicates? There's very a lot of different forms whether they're oxides, sulfates, silicates, carbonates. It's very confusing for the farmer. So it's our role to explain all this so they understand. And we, we mentor uh, farmers that um, in the end, they're telling us, we're giving them the control how to, how to farm. They're telling us what's happening on their farm. It's not, they're not relying on a, uh, an agronomist to visit regularly to tell them what to do. Uh, we actually empower the farmer. So for example here, the topsoil in a hectare of, uh, you know, the weight of that, you're looking at 100 metres long, 100 metres wide, 33 centimetres deep, you know, you're looking at about two to two and a half thousand uh, kilos or tonnes dry, depending on the soil type. So if people are going to think they're going to change much in the soil by applying 100 kilos, even a thousand kilos of fertiliser, you're not going to make much difference. It's all driven by these roots here. 
you've got you know two to four hundred tons of roots that's what drives the main change in the soil profile so it's very important very very important root systems feeding the plant from not only the the root system but from the top as well top and tail feeding the plant and here is an example of where if the soil is deficient in zinc or copper or any element the plant naturally wants to fire more carbonic acid into the soil profile and that carbonic acid actually exchanges into hydrogen and what that does is make the minerals that are in the soil that the plant's looking for more plant available so if you've got something that's more acidic in the soil and uh, you're at low levels of something and you're not applying more copper or zinc the plant is looking harder and harder to find that and therefore you're getting more and more soil acidity happening without you even being aware of it so it's a huge problem if you've got a lot of deficiencies try to fix them within your budget as fast as you can so you can maintain production um, effectively now most people know that pH is on a log logarithmic scale. So a pH of six is you know, 10 times more acidic than a pH of seven. A pH of five is 100 times more acidic than the pH of seven. So very important to get to understand that and, and get that right. And you know, when you get nutrition correct, you end up with higher sugar levels, higher complex long chain sugars in the plant. And that's very important for insects because they can't digest that sugar the the your reliance on insecticides are a lot less because a plant cannot digest sugars that are so complex in a plant it's like trying to eat concrete it, it just doesn't work when you have a plant that's uh, a lot out of balance you have lower sugar levels and they're a lot less complex for the the insects to eat and therefore you have crop damage you might have a, a crop that's very high in um sugars in bricks levels but uh, the crops very moisture stressed well if the plants under stress you'll still get in trouble from insects now here we have um, some wheat that's had a nutritional seed dressing applied and some wheat without nutritional seed dressing so that's one of the things that we manufacture also and seed dressings are, are used a lot in the carbon systems agronomy programs as well as injecting liquid carbon, calcium, trace elements, whatever is required into the soil. And this is more done over in Western Australia, closer to you, where um, the soil conditions are a lot sandier, where we, we are granular, this doesn't work. The rainfall is too low to get proper mineralization. So we use a hybrid of granule and liquids and sometimes just liquids as well, but predominantly carbon to attract more moisture um, buffer any effects in the soil of high salt, um, chlorides, anything like that. And we also it also helps fertiliser efficiency. And here's an example of when you, you do get it right, you get a lot of the carbohydrates sticking to the roots. You don't want to see a plant with white roots. You want to see all the sugars and the soil sticking onto the roots. That's a healthy root system. And part of that is also combining different inoculums, trace elements, carbon products to conventional fertilizer as well down the tube and having reactive, uh, soluble reactive carbon like this. So as soon as you drop a granule of a, a soluble reactive carbon granule, that's what happens in water. It's immediately water soluble. It's not like a piece of coal. If you put coal in water, it sits and floats and doesn't break down for several minutes or days or months where a uh, reactive carbon uh, type of product will react immediately. And within seconds, a whole glass of water, for example, will be very black. That's the type of products that we're using in agriculture to get immediate effect as well as longer term effect. But some of the, the, the uh, outcomes from humic acid is their fertilizer efficiency. It helps with low cation exchange soil types, sodic soils, uh, soils that are full with heavy metals, it helps buffer all that. We also talk a lot about our crop rotations, very important. And in case if you are using soil chemistry, that's quite important there to have all your tools available and not grow the same crop in the same spot too many times. I know it can be done, but when you're looking at uh, not having all your eggs in one basket over in Australia with the farming, the different commodity prices, different conditions, frost, things like that, you need to, to be aware of your crop rotations and have good planning for that. 
here we have some reports that um, can be generated on farm using all the instruments and tools and we can provide the farmer a snapshot of, of what's happening in his crop which is very good for them a bit about our liquid inject programs a lot of the uh, equipment used in australia is very big uh, very big hectares thousands of hectares each farm a lot of farms are very big so they need to cover the ground quite quickly here we have a, a, a seeding bar all the seed is in the rear and then we have a liquid inject tank at the back putting all the liquid carbon trace elements whatever's required down the tube with the solid fertilizer as well and some of the kits that farmers put together we can uh, supply and it's basically a method of choosing the pump you need, the pressure regulator, your manifolds, your size line to deliver the liquid carbon and nutrition. And then it all clips together on your existing seeding equipment. Very easy to do. Not everyone needs to do liquid inject. A lot of people, it's not required, but in sandy soils, it's where we're making the biggest difference. It's feeding the plant with straight liquid in combination with some granular fertilizer, a hybrid. So a lot of the technology now, everybody has GPS, everything's nice and accurate and straight. Here are the liquid inject lines going into the tube. So we actually inject the carbon in this model down here and it'll either go just over the seed or just underneath it. It depends on the people's equipment. It all works pretty well. And this is at a, um, a field day where we're demonstrating to the public. Uh, this is just a, uh, like a, a show where we're injecting and reusing, recirculating liquid carbon so people can see how it's actually applied into the soil. This is on an implement tine on a, on a seeding machine. So it's like a working model. So for example, here we've got a, a wheat um, that's about 12 weeks old out in the paddock in winter. Sometimes it does actually get a bit wet. So some of the things that we can do is actually with the use of foliars is put them out through helicopters or even aeroplanes. And this is a few years ago now when we had a real, a lot of wet weather. We could actually apply that foliar at the critical stage of the T2Z14 on the wheat. And two weeks later, that's what you're looking at. Two to three weeks later is like this. It makes such a big difference. And we didn't have to drive over the crop at all. So here is what the good quality looks like later on. This is some uh, irrigated wheat in uh, Tasmania, in Australia, where we use minimal inputs and we still yielded uh, just uh, over 10 tonnes a hectare, quite comfortably. It can, the soil can be pushed a lot harder. But uh, the thing is the farmer didn't have to spend too much money on inputs. The crop did all the work. There's other people there that can yield more, but they're paying so much for inputs. And at the end of the day, the profitability is nowhere near as high. And here, here we have a photo of uh, canola a few years ago, where we averaged quite well, underpinning the whole program with different soil amendments, uh, biosolids, seed dressings, conventional fertilizer, liquid foliars, and the yield is fantastic. We averaged on dry land production uh, 3.5 tonnes per hectare on dry land, which is fantastic. We work with a lot of companies too with different inoculants. Uh, I heard uh, the other day that um, like Trichloderma was mentioned, Bacillus subsilis, all those sorts of products we use. And uh, we use them at the right times and the right uh, circumstances. Also, in certain areas, we use vesicular vascular mycorrhiza fungi as well, mainly in seed inoculation. So we work, we have some good relationships with people where we trust that supply those types of products, as well with uh, logistics and freight for things. We do um, opium poppies in Tasmania as well for medication, so for pain relief products. The CSA programs are utilised there as well, as well as potatoes, for example. Animal health products like mineral licks, uh, all the trace elements, salt, carbon, reactive carbon in there for the animals. We do a lot of testing on hay, uh, silage. 
So we can see what the actual mineral composition of that product is. So if the farm is going to use that product to feed out on farm, he knows how much to feed, what sort of result to expect. So he knows the quality of the product as well as uh, people manufacturing hay and what's going on there, how much they can sell it for, depending on the quality. So a lot of work is done in dairy and a lot of pasture cropping. Uh, this is Vic over in Western Australia, looking at some clover on a dairy farm. And we've got very good root systems. That's very important too, for to hang on for extra nutrition and moisture retention, especially over the summer months, trying to keep as much ground cover as possible. We can also do testing through taking uh, hair samples from you know animals as well. This was a few years ago. I was doing a bit of milking and uh, it was pretty messy that day, as you can see. But we had a, an issue in the dairy that we're trying to pinpoint. And another tool and method was to send hair samples to the laboratory to see what was going on inside the animal as well, as well as the soil and tissue water testing. Now, not many people, I haven't seen anybody in Australia do this yet, but we can also test the milk on the spot. What uh, brought this up was several years ago, you would have to demonstrate to a farmer why your programs work better. And to do that, you could be given a section of the farm to implement your, your program and then you could test the milk um, straight away the next day. You could do all the analysis on the milk to prove what you're doing in the farm was beneficial. Now, that was over 10 years ago when we, we did things like that uh, through word of mouth. I don't get asked to justify what we do now. Everybody knows and respects what we do, but it's good to have that there if we're doing a trial work, we can actually test here the fat in the milk, 3.4%. We've got the solids, we've got density, we've got uh, protein, 3.2%, lactose, we've got water now. We have seen some companies in the retail industry that there's actually added water in there and this device will pick it up. Never will a farmer add water to his milk, but we have come across samples like that in the past. So. We do test things like milk. We can test for antibiotics in milk as well. Here we're testing dissolved oxygen in water. So we know what we're working with. And for example, here's in uh, up in New South Wales in Australia, we do a lot of work in rice production as well. So our programs are utilized on rice. We do a lot of maize or corn production. Mainly that's for feeding dairy cows with. We use very low to zero chemical all the time. Hardly any insecticides or fungicides used. So you can see this frog is uh, quite happy. We do a lot of production in um, avocados, mainly in Western Australia, strawberries. A lot of that is organic as well. We don't necessarily think organic is the key. Um, it's great on a chemical perspective, but uh, you can't intervene when you want to keep the plant healthy at all times in the middle of winter or when the plants are waterlogged. So often I do see better quality and outcomes in carbon system agronomy rather than just organic or rather just, just conventional. To be able to utilise all the tools in the toolbox all the time has given the best outcome, the best yield, the highest profitability. So it's just a matter of educating the consumers as well. Uh, what is good? Everybody thinks that uh, you know organic is so much healthier and they pay so much more money for it where it's not always the case and conventional isn't always better either. Um, it's using everything that's available to the farmer. So we do a fair bit of work also in viticulture. The same programs apply in viticulture. Uh, we do a lot of grapes, work with a, a vineyard that wherever he goes the last 10 years, a lot of awards and this is in the Royal Show in Adelaide this year, a gold medal for his wine. It's all his management, his, um, everything he's doing on the vineyard. Obviously, they're good operators, but just getting the soil conditions right and manipulating the plant with what it needs, a lot of soil tissue testing and working out what does that plant need and being more specific about that. So we, we're quite active in Malaysia. This is a conference in Malaysia where we do a lot of chilies, eggplants, things like that. And we work a lot in Singapore. Here's an example of a chili crop that we planted in Malaysia. We started with the jungle, we cleared everything and 
this presentation is long enough as it is, but I'm only showing you about a fifth of what I could show you. Um, I just took the key slides to give you an example, but here is uh, eggplant production as well in the same paddock. So we actually had a, a lot of support from seed companies. We flew over there. We put a cedar together by hand. We went out to prove to the um, Malaysia government as well what we could do. And then we set up programs. And then we had met people along the way. Frank's based over in Malaysia and he works with us at Ferditech. And um, we were able to go now in the Cameron Highlands and produce vegetable crops with a lot less chemical as well. And here we've got vertical farming in, in Singapore. We did a scoping study there. We're improving what's happening there. They're always trying to improve, improve all the time. Then we also distribute uh, another tool, carbon systems agronomy is the application of biosolids. So this is Dr. Lou from Singapore visiting the, the plant. And uh, it's, a, it's a state of the art plant, the only type in the Southern hemisphere where it can produce uh, biosolids to a treatment one classification two grade, which is cleaner than any chicken or cow manure it's, it's put through a, a process at a treatment plant adjacent that um, disinfects the water through reverse osmosis, chlorination, ultrafiltration, ultraviolet light, and then all the product comes over as a sludge into this thermal drying facility. And then Ferditech then distributes that product and uses it and implements it in underpinning the carbon systems agronomy programs. So here's a uh, control room where everything's monitored. Out on the farm, the product's delivered in bulk. And you can see when the product's applied on a dairy farm. This is actually along the, the world-renowned Great Ocean Road. Some of you may have heard of the, the 12 Apostles. It's just down the road. But here's a dairy farm where the prill has been applied to biosolids. And you can see a difference what it's made. Also in carbon systems agronomy, Composting is a key tool for certain people, especially in organics. We can blend any trace elements in, aerate it, include more moisture and make that compost into a humus compost to break that humus down as much as possible. So left with a high quality product. And that's an aerial view of the facility. And that's a product, Humaxa. So you can see uh, there's many products and tools to use in a, in a farming program. And of course, um, getting out to industry events and promoting what we're doing, carbon-based, whether it's animal mineral licks, whether it's liquid fertilizer, seed dressings, biosolids, soil testing, everybody's different what they require and everyone has a different program. We also look after a lot of um, stores that we work with closely. This is where I'm sitting at the moment in the, uh, the home office. And it's very important to have all these screens available to look at all the data and see what's going on to develop the programs. It, a lot of time is used in, in working out what's required, not just uh, making sales. It's, it's a lot more to that. Um, it's all about what is required. Some of the tools you can use now come, you know, uh, ready for iPhones to use. You can clip on microscopes now, very handy for out in the field. For looking. An example here is broccoli seedlings that were contacted from a, a local nursery to come and help. He was using a lot of fungicides and insecticides and the broccoli is dying in many spots and he was spraying regularly. And just by getting the nutrition right a week later it improved and when we started our program from the start this is what we had with no chemical at all. No chemical, no fungicides. So we are able to, to demonstrate to a seedling grower what was possible just by getting the nutrition right, understanding the nutrition, and the plant's uh, key requirements. Here we're just measuring CO2 levels. Um, that's another topic to go into and demonstrating programs to the industry on how to you know, provide better outcomes, use less chemical, less water, just to get better efficiencies of what they're doing. So you can see that the, the seedlings are quite healthy. Well, only ones to, to demonstrate the use of no chemicals. Sometimes a grower would ask for 
a certain product to be applied because a lot of the farms in Australia are still in that conversion phase where they need a bit of reliance and help with synthetic products, um, some chemicals, because some of their soils are quite out of balance. And while we're building them to more productive balance, the chemicals do have their, their role to help the plant withstand the conditions that it's, it's surviving in. So there'll always be that transition and the use for certain chemistry, but we, we're a lot less reliant on that, a lot less reliant. Here's a, uh, a major player in the uh, nursery seedling industry in Australia. And that's a leak seedling. And that's their product. And this is what the CSA program could deliver. And we did it for cheaper. So we're cheaper, we use no chemical, no fungicide or insecticides. We'll be able to, we're able to produce this quality plant for the industry in comparison to that. Here we have a competitor's salary, all grown on the same farm, but they use one seedling and here they used our salary seedling. That's a difference. There's at least 15, 20% yield difference there. And a lot higher quality uh, levels of calcium, sugar levels. Let's see, uh, Vinesh there, he's um, pretty excited. We knew we were onto something pretty big with these carbon system agronomy programs and it's making a lot more profit for the, for the farmers as well. It's only a matter of time before the consumers are aware of the quality of food that they're eating. Um, they're still not very aware. These days, a lot of the, the direct soil pH can be measured via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi straight to your phone so we can record everything and have provide reports to farmers, which is fantastic. Here's just a few examples of seedlings. This is about a year ago in a nursery in Victoria. And the end result is a crisp head lettuce out in the paddock with a very minimal chemical use and very good quality uh, taste, shelf life. And of course, when uh, the supermarkets are looking for product, especially when the conditions are inclement, you might have a lot of uh, cold conditions or hot conditions where the lettuce might get tip burn or you have disease, fungi diseases in winter. We would very rarely get that. I can't even recall when we had a disease problem on the farms that we work with. So the supermarkets would always buy your lettuce first. Not necessarily at a premium price yet either, but they'd always buy your, far, your product before other people's because they knew the quality. Same with the, with the broccoli, very good color, very good shelf life and taste. And all the development is done at my home as well. I like to um, experiment with things. So here's a greenhouse that I built with uh, air circulation. I've got heating, I've got cooling and everything is automated off your phone. There's cameras so I can control it all from, if I was in India, I can still water everything from at home and see what's going on. And uh, we do a lot of experiments as well. And this has provided a lot of our you know, success out in the field. We, we're constantly looking to improve all the time, every day. Uh, grow lights as well. Now this is a an outcome in um, a latest publication in Australia, Vegetables Australia. As you can see, it's very heavily um, promoted with chemicals, you know, very heavily promoted. A lot of the growers are still reliant on a lot of those products. It's uh, it's but um, we don't want fungicides too high in our foods, if not at all. It's not good for our bodies. We're made of a lot of fungi and bacteria. And despite what a lot of people say, a lot of the bees are still getting damaged and killed in the process. So nearly 70% of the world's crops are solely reliant on bee pollination. So we, need, we can't kill the bees. And we're seeing here, a lot of places that we go, the bees are dead and that can't keep continuing. That just cannot continue what's happening. So we need to be careful, uh, have a lot more natural system. Watch when we use our chemistries very carefully, use them properly as by the label recommendations. These, this is just an example of some of the liquid fungicides that are used in the industry 
that people rely on heavily. They won't be able to grow crops without them, unfortunately. Most people aren't in the position to farm without chemicals. That's the position we've got into. And a lot of the uh, chemical companies are now getting more involved in the nutrition side of things. You're seeing bigger companies acquire smaller fertiliser companies. And if we don't um, try to get everything right, this is what's going to happen. We've got an estimated about 60 years left of harvests. Um, that comes off some pretty good soil too. We've got probably 60 years to get this right and even less in marginal country in Australia. Now, in 1983, we had these dust storms in Melbourne. This is going to become more frequent all the time in what's going on. So we need to get this right. We have a lot of programs and products. Um, a lot of agronomists are doing the right thing. And it's all about, you know, for the, for the next generation. That's what it's all about, making sure they've got food security and we're going about things the right way, getting everything right that we can. And um, this is actually my daughter and um, we do a lot of our own food production at home and experimenting and um, trying to grow the best quality food that we can. So that's in summary, uh, a brief overview of carbon systems agronomy. And I, I thank you again for the opportunity to speak. And um, I'm sure you'll have all my contact information if there's anything further I can assist you with, um, please let me know and um, I'll be able to provide further information in more detail. Otherwise, I will uh, I could be talking here all day about carbon systems agronomy. So I thank you very much for the opportunity to speak at your uh, seminar and uh, all the best. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor Newland for your nice and wonderful lecture on carbon system agronomy. Uh, in your presentation, you have nicely presented your work on the field of agriculture, horticulture, dairy, beekeeping, and uh, many more cropping uh, systems. Uh, you have uh, presented uh, nicely on advanced soil and water testing and their importance. Uh, you have nicely presented the nutrient work in plant after foliar applications. You also presented nicely that physiology of the crop, how plant and act when we applied fertilizers on plants. And also nicely delivered the synergistic and antagonistic effect of different nutrients. Uh, how to manage acid soil with different components of agriculture. You also nicely elaborate the uh, soil plant nutrient audit. So I am highly thankful to you for delivering the wonderful lectures in the in this national webinar. Thank you, Mr. McNeilan. Thank you. No, my pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I am uh, also inviting you for the benefactor session. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will start our uh, valedictory session uh, within 5 to 10 minutes. So we will hear us for the valedictory session. All the participants are requested, requested to be with us for the valedictory session. Okay, thank you.
good morning all of you on the valedictory function of the national webinar sustainable agriculture through natural resource management organized by department of agronomy college of agriculture navsar agriculture university bharuj so here with us on the virtual platform of this national webinar honorable vice chancellor of dr jp patel sir and here with us also the chief guest of this valedictory function dr pc sarma sir director icr central soil salinity research institute karnal haryana and here with also the director of research navsar agriculture university dr sr choudhary sir dean faculty of agriculture dr kg patel sir and all the dignitaries over here on the virtual platform so now we can proceed for the valedictory function dr tushar patel over to you thank you dr dd patel sir am i audible yes you are audible okay. okay a very warm good morning to all the dignitaries invitee guest distinguished participants renowned research persons ladies and gentlemen i am dr tushar patel co convener of the webinar that is on sustainable agriculture through natural resource management observed during 4 to 8 january 2021 that is hosted by department of agronomy college of agriculture navsari agriculture university campus bharuj it is my immense pleasure and pride to be here before all of you on the virtual platform of natural resource management gathering that are to say it is a galaxy of natural resource management intellectuals on behalf of the organizer i am delighted to offer a gracious and a red carpet welcome to all of you since last 5 days we have had a deep insight and discuss into several topics on natural resource management in reference to sustainable agriculture we had expert from local national and international level that all enlightening us both in theory and in practical way and walk, walk through the subject technically as well as philosophically as it is required as we come to the valedictory sessions now i take this opportunity to introduce and welcome the dignitaries present over here ladies and gentlemen it is a great honor for me to introduce our chief guest dr jp patel sir honorable vice chancellor navsari agriculture university navsari on behalf of all the gather here i welcome you sir your gracious presence is indeed a source of great motivation sir we are grateful from the bottom of our heart for courteously and gladly accept our invitations as a chief guest sir and the grace the valedictory factions once again accept our sincere welcome sir now we all are delighted to have us dr pc sharma sir director icr central soil salinity research institute karnal haryana i am very much pleased to welcome you sir we'll look forward for your valedictory address once again a special welcome to you sir may i also welcome respected dr sr choudhary sir director of research and dean pg studies navsari agriculture university navsari the guest of honor of today's valedictory sessions dr choudhary sir is also a patron of the today's webinar kindly accept our warm welcome to you sir we are in this prelude to have a, a distinguished persons as a webinar president dr k g patel sir dean faculty of agriculture and principal college of agriculture navsari agriculture university campus bharuj we are glad to welcome you also sir we also look forward the gracious presence of the principal of various colleges dr anil chimpala ma Today, sir, head regional research station, Central Soil Salinity Research Institute, ICR, Bharuj, Dr. Y. P. Singh, sir, principal scientist, ICR, CSSRI, Lucknow, and other university officers, and many more decorated officers from the SAUs and ICR systems. We have also research persons from abroad, Mr. Matt Newland from Australia. So all are welcome here. Now I like to invite a few participants. for said their views and experience on this five days marathon now the participants are requested to unmute themselves or raise their hands
मे आई इन्वाइट डॉक्टर आर के माथुकिया सर फ्रॉम जूनागढ़ एग्रीकल्चर यूनिवर्सिटी टू शेयर हिज व्यूज ऑन द फाइव डेज वेबिनार सर डॉक्टर आर के माथुकिया सर Unfortunately, uh, she might have faced the internet connectivity issues. So again, I invite participants. May I invite Dr. Jamin Pandya ji for uh, uh, share the views on this five days marathon. Namaskar, everybody. Very good morning, all of you. uh thanks thank you dr tusar patel sir to uh, uh opportunity to give opportunity to me to share some view about the about this webinar first of all uh i am giving uh, i am very much thankful to dr dd patel sir and his team as a organizer and uh, to explore myself on this huge virtual platform also and amongst the great experienced uh, scientist also so thank you very much to give me an opportunity this is very uh, thoughtful provocateful uh, webinar we can say like that and very well experienced uh, scientist um, uh, and they inspired us also to how to uh, how to present yourself on this virtual platform also so thank you very much dr tusar patel sir again and uh, thank you very much college of agriculture nau baruch team thank you uh, thank you dr jaimin pandya ji for sharing the very positive uh, thoughts for this webinar now invite uh, dr rehana ma'am to share the views on this five days marathon ma'am please unmute yourself dr rehana ma'am uh good morning everybody very good morning uh, uh good morning everybody i hope i am uh, visible yes uh, yes ma'am yes uh, so a special good morning from uh, the valley of uh, snow this time we are having a lot of snowfall over there and all the roads are clogged and even the tourists were stranded so it's a very uh, warm welcome to this valedictory session from one of your um, uh, participants that's me rihana from kashmir it was an excellent training and the first of all i will say the topic was very accurate uh, very accurate for these times because uh, we are going for uh, high fi agriculture and sustainable agriculture is being forgotten uh, and uh, then the natural resource management for sustainable agriculture it was a very apt topic and uh, all the uh, these um, uh, all uh, the topics concerning its management were touched by eminent scientists and uh, the management was very good the organization was uh, very good excellent and uh, it was um, although sometimes we didn't get the time for uh, um, interaction Uh, but uh, still the questions were covered uh, nicely the queries were answered and uh, on the whole i found that it was a very uh, good uh, team work uh, by all the persons concerning with the organization of this program and uh, especially mr tushar patel and the others so it was uh, in my opinion it was very good the topics were good and they were to the point uh, like uh, these days we are having webinars which are not being understood by the students at all they are just logging in and this but the topics over here were which are really needed and the way it was started for example of uh, i will say about ajit nanser so he started from electromagnetic spectrum and all similarly i found the same thing with the weed management i found it same thing with by fertilizers touching from the basics and reaching to the top and what to be done next so that way it covered the whole intellect the students 
uh, the budding researchers and the eminent researchers who got more opportunity to in interact with other people. So on the whole, I congratulate the whole team of Navsari for conducting this such a wonderful webinar. And I even uh, sent uh, some of the, um, I told some of my students also to log in into the YouTube because I found it that it was these uh, topics we're covering. Uh, I said covering all the uh, generations. So it was beneficial for all. So thank you once again for inviting me uh, to speak uh, on this occasion. And I congratulate the whole Navsari team. And uh, I think that um, you should conduct some other training also uh, on this manner. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, ma'am, uh, for uh, your word of appreciation. That really means a lot for us. Dr. Rihanna, ma'am, is a uh, head of department, Scott Kashmir, Department of Agronomy. Okay, now uh, I invite one more participant, uh, Dr. Monica Sukla. Kindly uh, unmute her uh, and share something. Dr. Monica Sukla. Hello. Hello. Yes, yes, you are audible. Am I audible, sir? Yes, yes, you are very much audible. Yes, sir. Good, very good morning to all participants. And um, this was a very good webinar. Uh, all the topics were covered about sustainable agriculture. This is very much needed nowadays. Sustainable agriculture is the need of our of present day. Because agriculture is have, facing a different type of problems nowadays. In earlier days, the problems was lower productivity and lower production of the grain. But nowadays, the main problem is related to the soil. How to manage the soil in the sustainable ways so we can uh, protect the, our environment and the soil for the future generations uh, and uh, for, for the future agriculture. If we are not, if we will not be aware about the soil protection and environment protection, then we will lose our uh, precious earth and soil. Then uh, our next generations will face very much problem in the future for agriculture. So this is uh, this was very good webinar, and thank you all uh, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Monica Sukhaji, for uh, your words. Okay, okay, now uh, I, I take, take the opportunity to invite our resource persons. First, I invite Dr. Y. P. Singh, sir, who himself has a deep interest in the field of NRM, and he has also delivered the lecture during the webinars uh, as a resource person. So I invite Dr. Y. P. Singh, sir, please, sir. Good morning to all of you. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are very much audible, sir. Okay, thank you very much. So, of you and my worthy director is also present this uh, today. He is, uh, it is uh, great indeed for uh, us that he will uh, enlighten us on the uh, natural resource management. We will be definitely benefited from his. Uh, so, first of all, I have already conveyed, uh, Dr. Tushar, convey already, I have already conveyed my thanks to the organizer for the an opportunity to be part of this uh, webinar. But today, once uh, uh, you again uh, give me this opportunity to say something. So, I was part of this webinar for four days. I missed it for one day. Uh, unfortunately, because I was not feeling well on the, on the day of fifth, of January, so that's why I could not attend this uh, your webinar. But uh, rest of the days, I was part of your webinar and uh, listened all the lectures. It was it was very nicely uh, uh, conducted, or it was very nicely uh, uh, you can say compiled the information and uh, systematized in a very systematic way. Uh, the the exercise for uh, selecting the topics. And the source persons uh, was really a very good exercise. You did, you, your team, or uh, your vice chancellor. I, I, I congratulate for uh, uh, this uh, uh, rigorous exercise you did for selecting the uh, the good resource person from Tamil University, from Tamil Nadu University, from 
from from Bihar Agricultural University, from CSSRI, our institute, and and many more dignitaries who are the expertise in their fields. In the very beginning, our uh, honourable uh, DG Sir had uh, expressed his uh, his uh, uh, sincere thanks to the organizer for uh, coming this uh, this seminar, and uh, this really it was the uh, need of our to how to manage our natural resources in a systematic way. And uh, the, the main thing is natural resource management include uh, I think the soil management of soil, water, and uh, the environment. And you covered all most of the aspects in this in this in, this, in all these three uh, fields. So once uh, as I advised you earlier that because you have lot of material in during this five days webinar, so I would like to request you to compile and prepare a nice document in the in document for. For uh, for, uh, for so that uh, you can uh, uh, upload that uh, document on the uh, to to internet or to e e e, e portal like that so that uh, most of our newcomers or new new scientists or uh, very benefited from these uh, deliberations which delivered by the highly learned people. So with these words, I once again I would like to thank to the uh, to to your team. Dr. Sushant, Dr. Patel Sir, Head of Department, Dean College of Dean Agriculture, and the BC Sir, and all the participants uh, for sharing their and Dr. Matt Newland. Dr. Matt Newland delivered really has delivered very good lecture, and uh, it was really a, a, a very uh, informative for the uh, we all scientific uh, natural resource management fraternity. So I am thankful to him. And uh, once, once again, again, I thank Dr. Dr. Tushar for giving me the opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, YP Singh, sir. We have considered, considered whatever point you have suggested. Uh, now, I kindly request Dr. Siddharamba Gadankari, sir, Professor of Agronomy uh, from Harvard. Uh, Dr. Siddharamba, sir, I request to kindly unmute and share the views regarding the webinars. Dr. Siddharam Pasar. Dr. Okay, he might have faced some issues. So uh, now I invite uh, Mr. Matt, Lewin, Matt Newland for sharing his views and comment on the webinar of the topic. Uh, Mr. Matt Newland. Hey, thank you, Dr. Patel. Um, firstly, I'm uh, very, very humbled to have the invitation uh, to speak in India and um, very appreciative of your uh, your connection to Australia and to um, to make make more of a difference uh, to your agriculture over there. It's, it's always very exciting to make more of a difference. Uh, and it is pretty good with the, uh, the webinars these days, given the, the situation around the world that we can still uh, get together and uh, discuss and uh, share information and, and gain more knowledge. Um, I think it's fantastic on this platform that you've arranged. Um, it's been very good. Most of the week I was able to, to tune in and listen and have the, the, the conference uh, going on in the background while I was doing some, some work in the office. I, I couldn't attend most of yesterday, but I could see what was happening the whole week. It was very um, informative and specific in a lot of areas that, that, that people are working on, which I think is, is very great as well. A lot of detail there. And I think it's very important that um, it's your students will need to convey that information to the, the grassroots as well, to the farmers to, to make these changes. Uh, it's very good to also have the theory in the laboratories and in the seminars, but we've got to make these farmers also understand, make it happen out there as well. That's the hardest thing I find is to make the ideas happen, implement the new ideas and technology. Once they're implemented and things are happening, it's it, it's amazing how much uh, a difference you can make. 
So I thought it was great to um, share the information with you from our behalf. We do things a little bit differently in Australia. Obviously, we're growing very similar crops, but the climates are different. You know, but um, I'm sure there's a lot of similarities that we have and uh, a lot of good information that we can share. So, um, yeah, it's nice to see uh, your formalities of the program and how appreciative you are of the information. So I'm very humbled and I thank you again for um, being able to, to participate in your webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Your technical perspective for farmers would be most relevant for today's perspectives. We are again appreciate and uh, thank you for accepting our invitations and delivering your expert talk. Thank you, sir. Now, the same for this particular idea was adjusted by a person who is not only a great motivation to all of us, but a visionary and the person who gave us a belief to bring together this event. He is none other than our respected Dean and Principal, Dr. K.G. Patel, sir. And he will be give an opening remarks and perspective at this valid session. However, before I request you to speak, may I request Dr. K.G. Patel, sir, to give an overview of this webinar? Dr. K.G. Patel, sir. So, uh, Dr. Tushar Patel. So, uh, this is the five days national webinar on sustainable agriculture through natural resource management. On the valedictory function, here, because Honorable Vice Chancellor of Nausali Agriculture University, Dr. Jayati Patel, sir, and the Chief Guest, uh, Dr. P.C. Sarma, sir, Honorable Director, uh, Central Soil Serenity Research Institute, Karnal, and also Dr. S.R. Chaudhary, sir, Director of Research, Nausari Agriculture University, Dr. K.G. Patel, sir, Dean Faculty of Agriculture, College of Agriculture, Baruj, all the dignitaries uh, here with us, and also here with us, Dr. Anil from the Regional Center, CSSRI, Baruj, dear participants, and all the resource persons over the country and the world. So, before going to the summary of the uh, National webinar. Uh, our webinar was started in the gracious presence of the Dr. Jayati Patel sir, Chief Patron, Vice Chancellor sir, and the Chief Guest of this uh, inaugural function, Dr. S. K. Chaudhary sir, Deputy Director General, NRM uh, New Delhi. And in the inaugural function, Dr. Jayati Patel sir narrated so many things which are related to uh, natural resource management and his speech is also enlightened us to do more things for the benefits of our, the farmers as well as for the development of our College of Agriculture as well as the Nausari Agriculture University. Also, then the August presence of the Chief Guest, Dr. S. K. Chaudhary sir, he has narrated too much that is the, uh, for the betterment of the nature resource management, how can we sustainable uh, the agriculture? This is on this we are worried about the uh, resources, all the resources, but we have to think on the for the welfare of the society by the nature resource management. Also, uh, during the first day in the technical session, we have a Dr. Ajit Nam, sir, Ajit Singh Nam, sir, director of research. Uh, GP1, another university of agriculture and technology, and he has uh, narrated the topic that is the role of geospatial technology in sustainable resources of uh, management to combat climate change. So, already Dr. Rehana narrated about the uh, important topics covered by Dr. Ajit Singh Nansar. He has rightly narrated each and every aspect related to combat the climate change for the sustainable agriculture. Then, after the second lecture, we were delivered by Dr. N. Ravi Sankar, from He is from the IFSR Modi Buram. And he has narrated each and everything related to the role of integrated farming system in nature for natural resource management. He has covered each and every component of the integrated farming system. So, which are very, uh, we have highlighted each and everything and which are very useful for us. 
that third lecture was delivered by the C.R. Chinnamuthu sir. He is from the Tamil Nadu Agricultural University, Coimbatore. And he has given the very nice lecture on nanotechnology and for an its application in agriculture with special emphasis to the natural resource management. And the second day, the Honorable Director, Dr. Hamasu Patak sir, uh, the ICR Natural Institute of Aquatic Space Management from Malayalam Varamati. He has given a very nice lecture on the importance of AYG stress management in agriculture. He has narrated each and every aspect of the AYG stress, that is the air, water and soil. So, uh, by with his views, he has whatever the views he has shared with us, it is very enlightening us and very useful for us. Then after the Dr. N. K. Sarma sir, Principal Scientist Agronomy, uh, ICR, Indian Institute of Soil and uh, Water Conservation from Dehradun. He has given a very nice lecture on soil and water conservation, a tool for natural resource management. He has also uh, uh, narrated each and every aspect of soil and water conservation. Then after Dr. Siddharamappa Gadenkari, Professor of Agronomy, and uh, he has a PI of the network project on organic farming, India Institute of Organic Farming, US Harvard. He has given a very nice and insightful lecture on potentiality and constraint and strategy in adoption of the organic farming. Then after the, uh, the uh, we have also arranged the rapid fire round for emerging scientists that is Dr. Jamin Pandya from Nausari Agriculture University. He has given a very good lecture on beneficial microbes, a crucial quality indicators for soil health management. He has narrated each and every aspect related to microbes which are beneficial for us. Then after Dr. H.M. Patel from Nausari, he has also given a very nice lecture on the topic, the potential use of earthworm species for making quality environment. For the house, I want to narrate over here that Dr. Acham Patel has taken a very good experiment on different species of the earthworms, how it works in our, in our uh, uh, the condition or local condition. He has narrated too much information for the uh, for us. Then after on the third day, Dr. Y.P. Singh sir, Principal Scientist, CSSRI, Regional Research Station, Lucknow. He has very nicely narrated the utilization of municipal solid waste as alternate source of organic amendments in the sodic soils. I have narrated over here for the, on, in the house that even though he is suffering from the fever, Dr. Y.P. Singh sir uh, uh, has given a very nice lecture on this topic and he is a man of the research, particularly in the utilization of the municipal solid waste. Uh, then after, the Dr. Anil Dixit sir, the principal scientist, uh, National Institute of Biotic Stress Management, Raipur, Chhattisgarh. He has very nicely, he is a man of weed, weed science and he has very nicely narrated the topic that is the recent trends in weed management. He has given a very good lecture and he has uh, narrated each and every aspect of the weed control or weed management into the field condition. And after the Dr. R. H. R., the senior scientist, ICR Indian Institute of Soil and Water Conservation from the Vasal, and he has also given a very nice lecture on conservation agriculture for sustainable and climate resilient production system. As he is a man of conservation agriculture, having a 10 year experience in the conservation agriculture, he has very nicely narrated each and every aspect of the conservation agriculture. Then after Dr. Tusar Patel, the co-convener of this uh, webinar, he has also narrated a very, uh, very good subject and that is on non-chemical weed management for sustainable agriculture. Then after the man from the NM College of Agriculture, none other, none other than Dr. Nitin Gurde has given a climate resilient techniques for the enhancement of the pulse productivity. Then after, on the fourth day, Dr. Sekh Rappa from the US Tharwar, he has given a very nice lecture on insect pest management in organic farming through mycoinsecticide. He, has, uh, he is a man of uh, the organic farming for particularly the, for the pest management. He has given a very good uh, recommendation uh, for us and as well as for the farmers for the pest, insect pest management in organic farming. Then after 
the Dr. Lalit Mahatma, the man of biofertilizer of the Department of Plant Pathology at Nausari Agriculture University. He has a vast experience and he is a pillar of the uh, biofertilizer unit in our university. He has given a very nice lecture on microbes, the volunteers of par excellence to manage natural resources in agriculture. And after Dr. G. T. M. Jetwa uh, from Thunagar Agriculture University, he has very nicely narrated the topic given him that is on role of entomopathogen in insect based management. Then after the Dr. B. Sketu from our college, he has given the very nice lecture on nutritional interventions to mitigate methane production in ruminants. Then after Dr. H. H. Patel has also given the uh, uh, deliver the lecture on enhancing water use efficiency, need of an hour. Then after today, it is the last day that of our national webinar. And in this national webinar uh, today, uh, Dr. Uh, with Mr. Matt Newland from uh, he is a senior carbon system agronomist from Institute of Fund Tech, Melbourne, Australia. As uh, rightly narrated by Dr. Tusar and as well as Dr. Uh, Hiran Patel, that uh, 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 he has given a very nice lecture on carbon system agronomy. So these are all about the uh, 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 lectures given a resource person, uh, resource person that has given the different lectures uh, during this five days webinar. Then after looking towards the summary of this webinar, then. The summary that is the as the national uh, natural resources are the biggest assets of rural communities that livelihoods primarily depends on the use of natural resources like soil, water, and trees. Therefore, management of these resources is critical to sustaining and improving the livelihoods of rural communities generally based on agriculture. The major concern of natural resource management are low farm productivity and profitability, land degradation, low water productivity, soil health deterioration and low nutrient use efficiency, abiding stress including climate aberration and loss of tree cover and deterioration in ecosystem services. Now is the time to get down to earth and take urgent action on solving those issues towards a sustainable inclusive and resource efficient path. We should develop the location specific, cost effective, eco-friendly conservation and management technologies for higher input use efficiency, agriculture productivity and profitability without deteriorating nature resource base. This will provide valuable information for local government in establishing bid to long term agriculture development plan and for farming holes to prepare their production plans. The NRM research program have been prioritized within the perspective to different themes that is soil inventory and characterization, integrated soil water nutrient management, water management, resource conservation technology, crop diversification, integrated weed management, integrated farming system including agroforestry, trial and farming, arid, coastal and hilly agriculture, abiotic stress management, climate resilient agriculture, conservation agriculture, waste, wastewater utilization, solid waste management and application of nanotechnology to enhance nutrient and water use efficiency. So the research of NRM should be reached to the farmers by different extension activities and the government policies of agriculture based on natural resource management should be effectively management and also the NRM technology should be transferred by effective extension activities. So these are all about the summary of the uh, this national webinar. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Dr. D.D. Patel, sir, for uh, give the details overview of the five days marathon uh, of the webinar. Uh, now, to give an opening remarks of this webinar, may I take the pleasure of requesting our respected Dean and Principal Dr. K.G. Patel, sir, uh, for uh, the address the gathering, please, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, good morning to all of you at the end of this uh, webinar of uh, 
organized by Bharat of Agriculture and Avin of Sahaj, the campus Baruch. And uh, today with us, our Honorable Vice Chancellor and Chief Patron, Dr. Jarmi Patel, sir, and Avin of uh, And uh, today with us, our respected Dr. B. Sarma, sir, Director, ICR Center, Soil Center Research Institute, Karna, uh, and also Dr. Director of Research, and Dr. S. R. Chaudhary, sir. And uh, all of the university officers, deans, and directors, today with us, Dr. Anil from uh, Central Science Research Institute, Baruch. And uh, all the officers, faculty members, fellow participants, students, and stakeholders. And, uh, and all the resource uh, persons, lecturers, speakers, particularly uh, from different, different corners of the country and uh, the net to land from Australia also. So, all gentlemen, good morning, all of you once again. So, uh, Webinar is very important because uh, all the whole the world is facing the problem of COVID-19 under such circumstances. It is very difficult to manage the uh, physical mode of the seminar, leadership program, etc. But uh, the this is the platform, the virtual platform is very important to organize the webinar for the sake of the farmers, sake of the uh, faculty members, students, and stakeholders. So, digital resources, especially water and soils, are essential for the function and structure of agriculture production system and for the global social and federal matter sustainability. So, the topic is very relevant and for the present day because agriculture accounts for roughly 70% of total fresh water withdrawals globally. Farming also contributes to water pollution from nutrient and pesticide runoff and soil erosion. Without improved efficiency measures, uh, the uh, agricultural water consumption is expected to rise by about 20% globally by 2050. Climate change is already affecting water supply and agriculture changes in the essence in the seasonal farming. Since the timing of rainfall and snow pack melt, analyzed with higher occurrence and severity of droughts and drought. And these are two very important natural resources like soil and water are very important. And one third of the planet's land is severely degraded and fertile soil is being lost at the rate of 94 billion tons per year as the consequences of bad farming practices such as heavy drilling, multiple sequential harvest, and abundant use of agrochemicals. So as you know that indiscriminate use of chemicals and a lot of things that we have degraded soil and water that is our prime natural resources. An increase of productivity can help push progress towards future food security and the general well-being of products and producers and rural communities globally. But given the limited natural resources based on which agriculture depends sustainable development, will ultimately depend on the responsible management of the planet natural resources. Because when we talk about the natural resources, when we have to conserve, when we have to protect the resources, then we have to conserve enhancement and we have to increase the efficiency of the resources. And that is very important for sustainable agriculture. So in this seminar, the majority parts, majority components of the resources are have been covered by the different speakers. Actually, our uh, our committee, the Dr. Patel and Dr. Sat Patel, will take a lot of pain to choose the topics. And uh, the speakers have covered and they have identified the speaker with different components. Uh, almost majority component, as the other by Dr. Dr. Patel, majority major components have been covered in this in the webinar, and they are justified fully to explain very well all the kind of participants, students, particularly. So I got a deep irrigation, climate regulus, uh, manipulation of water, indicator farming system, carbon sequences, biotech and biodegradable plant production measures. Majority of the uh, uh, components have been covered in this webinar that will be useful to the uh, fellow uh, participants. More than 300 participants across the country and few from globe, particularly Australia, Malaysia, Afghanistan, and Gulf countries attended this webinar. This is where this is the beauty of this webinar. Even our speaker is also from Australia. So, uh, as rightly pointed out by Dr. Jadwi Patel, the Vice of the United States, speech that this will be an international symposium. So, then I uh, uh, remember that. Uh, this is the thing, and it should be a national symposium webinar. So, I heartily congratulate to all the participants for active participation as well as organizing committee, especially Dr. Divis, Dr. Tusa, Dr. Hiri, and all the team of the agronomy department. Sir, this is the uh, year of the webinar for this college. Actually, we have identified the team of different departments and not a single department left to, to organize this webinar. Total, this is the 10th number of webinar. And again, I congratulate to all the uh, faculty members, the dynamic uh, faculty members of this uh, campus to organize such a big webinar in the uh, for, for 
Thank you, thank you very much, sir, for sharing your profound and deep sense of appreciation. You have rightly sensitized the issues of natural resource management, and you have also given the solutions by conducting such webinars in future. Also, your words is really a full of enthusiasms and valuable knowledge. Thank you again, sir. Now, Dr. S. R. Chaudhary, sir, Director of Research and Dean PG Studies. Nausari Agriculture University, Nausari, is indeed a well wisher the mentor of our Agriculture College Bharuj. In fact, in last when he asked and motivated, motivated us to conduct such high impact event at national level. And now, as you all witness, we have almost done it. The credit is also goes to you, sir. He has always shown a keen interest in our activity and in him, we found a great strength and support to all the programs we have undertaken. May I kindly request Dr. S. R. Chaudhary, sir, to share a few words and his view on this particular webinar. Dr. S. R. Chaudhary, sir. So, Namaskar and good morning to all of you. And first of all, I am thankful to organizers, Dr. Tushar, Dr. D. D. Patel, Dr. K. G. Patel, sir, for uh, organizing such a valuable program, meaningful program and giving me an opportunity to interact with you people. Now, uh, after the hectic five days uh, or successful five days, now you are coming to the end and this is the veredictory function. And uh, uh, the report was properly presented by Dr. D.D. Patelji. Uh, so before going anything, uh, I start with the uh, Dr. Uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Australia Agriculture University, Dr. J.P. Patel Sarji and today's chief guest, Dr. P.C. Sharmaji, and Dr. K.G. Patel, the uh, various participants and uh, various resource person present on other side. So uh, now it is really a great, indeed it is a matter of pleasure to be with you people uh, because after having the five days deliberations, discussions, uh, now we are coming to the end. As a director of research now, uh, 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 really, it is a matter of privilege and uh, to thank uh, particularly the resource person from the GBPUT Pantanagar, CSSRI Karnal, uh, TNU Baramati, and all other resource persons uh, who have contributed for making this event very, very meaningful and successful. So on behalf of the Directorate of Research, I thank all of you. And uh, I also uh, appreciate and thank organizing, organizers for uh, doing a commendable job and Herculean task you have completed, definitely. And uh, based on the observations made by uh, Rehana ji, Monika ji, YP Singh ji, Jamin and others, uh, and based on the report, it is known that you deliberated and discussed at length uh, uh, regarding the IFS, nanotechnology, biofertilizer, micro, role of the microbes, uh, then climate resilient technology you have discussed, uh, abiotic stress management you have discussed. So uh, more or less you have covered many areas or very, uh, mm -hmm. what do you say, the latest technologies might have been discussed within the group. Now you see uh, our jurisdiction, that, that, that is the seven districts of the South Gujarat. Uh, we have high rainfall area, we have the semi-arid area. On the other hand, we have the coastal area and we also have the hill area. So uh, our jurisdiction is very, very diverse. And every area needs a different kind of care. So uh, now I have, uh, expect from uh, agronomist uh, on, uh, to organize. Now this is Dr. Tushar and organization. This is the another Herculean task I'm giving to you because you have uh, successfully completed this event. So another event must be uh, organizing brainstorming session that is the uh, uh, again topic must be same that is the sustainable agriculture through resource uh, uh, natural resource management NRM. so you i request you to organize brainstorming session uh, at least for improving the prevailing conditions of south gujarat that is related to nausari agriculture university or uh, if possible uh, how the uh, this uh, natural resource management uh, may be improved in Gujarat or as a whole country. So at least, at least as a director of research of Nosari Agriculture University, it's my concern uh, that you come with the beautiful recommendations 
and whatever uh, you draw the recommendation after five days you have gone through the various areas you have touched various area now which points need to be tapped just you list out and submit the list to the ddg uh, nrm uh, dr uh, sk choudhury ji so it will be definitely give, uh, help him and uh, you also submit the new technical program to me for approval uh, in coming agresco meeting research subcommittee meetings uh, you now particularly there are the many participants from the nosari gregorian university also so from the youngsters i expect that you come with the new technical program at the same time uh, you also keep in mind uh, the project proposal which may be submitted to the various financing agencies for approval so uh, if you get one or two project from other agencies definitely it will boost our research area of nosari gregorian university and it will also support your career and ultimately our farmers are going to be benefited our area is going to be benefited uh, now before end just the next, uh, over last 70 years or so uh, we human being are res responsible for degrading the most of the natural resources so now uh, there are the various thoughts in india we say the uh, prakritik kheti or re, uh, in abroad people say the regenerative agriculture there are the projects on the parampara paramparagat kheti uh, system so there are the various systems now again uh, resurfacing so there is there is a huge uh, uh, possibilities to tap various areas at least for conserving the natural all the natural resources so now uh, i will be very happy if you give very very uh, area specific recommendations to uh, the directorate for implementation at nosari agriculture university suppose you give only the two recommendation i will be the happiest person so and uh, best wishes for the future and uh, uh, once again i take this opportunity to thank all the organizers all the faculty members of nosari uh, this college college of agriculture bharuj for organizing a, uh, this uh, very very useful webinar uh, and i Uh, take this opportunity to request all the resource person who have contributed in this webinar please join the hands with the scientist of nosa agriculture university and as and when we look towards you for any support cooperation kindly cooperate with us so with these words i once again i thank you thank you very much thank you very much dr sr choudhury sir for your words of appreciation also thank you for your constant guidance and support for this webinar uh, sir we all are committed and available in service of farmers so definitely we will do something to upgradations of the farmers and ultimately to boost up the nation's agriculture in sustainable way sir thank you sir without taking much more time now i invite our chief guest dr p c sharma sir director icr central soil salinity research institute karnal for his address and remarks so we are very eager to listen to you dr pc sharma sir the platform is your now thank you dr patel honorable vice chancellor dr jdp patel honorable guest of honor director research dr sr choudhury sir dr dd patel dr kg patel sir who has invited me specifically for this concluding remarks closing function and uh, it's very uh, timely and uh, good that uh, this seminar this webinar that is being organized that has been organized for the past 5 days i think it's uh, a herculean task with respect to the organizers for organizing this webinar for 5 days program sustainable agriculture through natural resource management and uh, when we talk about the natural resource management during these past 5 days you must have discussed heard much about our natural resources the available with us soil air and how they are being degraded how they are being polluted day by day when we are going for the higher productivity we are we want to get higher yields certainly we are going or adopting the methods for intensive agriculture and we are going for a intensive agriculture there is lot of pressure on the natural resources particularly on the soil water and 
as uh, the climate also and i will be devoting this uh, my talk for this uh, address on salt affected soils that is exploiting salt affected soils and poor quality waters for food security in india because uh, i belong to this uh, institute that is central soil salinity research institute we have our headquarters at karnal and uh, centers at baruch dr anil chinchmalapure is there he is already collaborating with uh, navsari agriculture college as well as with the university also and we have two more centers at uh, lucknow and uh, canning town dealing with the different ecologies of salt affected soils when we talk about the country there are 6.73 million hectares of salt affected soils and out of those 2.96 million hectares saline and 3.77 million hectares sodic soils this database that was generated that was developed in 1996 it is already more than 25 years or around 25 years and this institute cssri has already undertaken this exercise when we are getting questions what about today we have adopted different practices we have gone through different climatic changes also and what is the current status of salt affected soils in the country when we are seeing the current status we have already undertaken this exercise and first of all we took this uh, initiative that we want to update 50% of the map by taking up haryana punjab uttar pradesh and gujarat these four states and first of all because we were in uh, situated in haryana we started with the uh, haryana and compared to 1996 our exercise that was completed four years ago 2016 2017 and we observed from in the during the past 20 years even in haryana only 80000 hectares of saline soils they have increased we have already reclaimed too much of the soils alkali soils they have been reclaimed around 2 million hectare in haryana but still the saline soils they have increased and the total salt affected soils when we say about haryana in 1996 it was 2.3 lakh hectare and in 2016 it was 3.1 lakh hectare similarly the exercise was also undertaken in the two other states uttar pradesh and gujarat we wanted to complete by this year but due to the covid 19 our efforts they got halted the some delayed occurs but the sampling has almost ground truthing part that has been completed and when we are seeing those parts around 10 to 15% increase we are recording both in uttar pradesh as well as in gujarat when we are saying the 96 data 2.2 million hectare salt affected soils in gujarat out of this the major majority saline 1.68 million hectare and 0.54 million hectare sodic but in general when we are saying that around 10 to 12% 15% that increase we are observing now we will come up with the exact data in uh, years time by the end of the next year and uh, certainly we will be say, uh, saying that whether it has increased from 2.2 million hectare and how much it has increased and how much the land degradation or the water uh, we need to take care of similarly in uttar pradesh also we are getting increase in the sodic soils now the world bank efforts they have undertaken large mega efforts to reclaim those soils but even now those parts they are increasing and we have to take care of besides the sustainable agriculture practices we have to take care of our natural resources also then the major technologies developed by this institute that is the for the reclamation of alkali soils it was the gypsum technology through by the addition of gypsum technology through csri and through land reclamation corporations different state governments we have recorded that around 2 million hectares of alkali soils they have been reclaimed 
2.07 million hectare uh, if we go precisely and still the major issues that we are getting we were getting gypsum from the natural mines from rajasthan but the question of the legal laws also the mining uh, issues as well as the poor quality of gypsum that is available in the country and due to those cssri has already undertaken the initiative and developed three products based upon the elemental based sulfur and including gypsum also thereafter the for the reclamation of saline soils subsurface drainage technology subsurface drainage technology that was started in haryana also in gujarat maharashtra and karnataka also and our renal center at uh, bharuch they have started with the uh, subsurface drainage application in gujarat part also and then when we will be seeing the third major technology that was the crops cssri was working mainly on four crops rice wheat mustard and chickpea we want to extend to other crops also like soybean uh, gram uh, chickpea uh, then moong bean lentil basically the pulses as well as the going towards the biosolid in agriculture we want to include, we have started with canoa applying canoa uh, breeding also and uh, as well as the maize through uh, this seven, uh, webinar i would be uh, requesting the uh, our honorable vice chancellor as well as the director of research that particularly uh, we want collaboration with the navsari agriculture university so that the rice material or the uh, other germplasm available with the csri that can be uh, screened in collaboration with the navsari agriculture university and if found appropriate those uh, lines can be released in a collaborative mode or jointly with the navsari agriculture university for the benefit of gujarat farmers then uh, another main uh, application that is uh, csra technology that is the land shaping that has occurred in uh, uttar pradesh as well as in the coastal salt affected areas then microbial cultures uh, microbial cultures csri has uh, restored the uh, one fusarium wilt that was that has devastated banana crop in uttar pradesh bihar and uh, through the technology that has uh, recently commercialized in the name of icr fusicon technology and uh, it has uh, uh, really helped us in restoring the uh, losses that has uh, gone to the farmers then uh, when we are saying with respect to the sustainability issues we were also observing the post reclamation losses or post reclamation when we have reclaimed those soils getting higher yields and in the coming times we were getting lower yields so for this the conservation agriculture the conservation agriculture is the main backbone for the sustainable agriculture what we are getting today the 3 ca principles that is the covering the uh, soil minimum tillage and uh, diversification we have to follow all those things csri has already initiated with respect to the conservation agriculture that is saving on the water resources by installing subsurface drip uh, irrigation subsurface drip irrigation along with the retention of crop residue on the surface that has helped us getting higher yields of rice wheat around 20% higher yields 20% savings in the Uh, fertilizer also getting higher fertilizer use efficiency and then some other things that is the development of climate and nutrient smart varieties for those salt affected areas we have to see all those things when we are going for the uh, alternate land use through high value horticulture crops agroforestry energy plantations they are also being screened and we have to look into these things also to get the alternate uh, to get the uh, panchayat lands or other things 
then the climate change impact on the vulnerability of the coastal saline ecosystems and when we are getting higher yields the intensive agriculture then the use of sensor based agriculture or the icts based mobile apps for technology transfer to the farmers that will also be helping us for getting higher yields or the sustainable agriculture and along with this the another important point that we have to take care of all that is the uh, capacity building of the farmers scientists technical administrative staff and uh, uh, just like the webinar that is being organized as on today and uh, we will be the helping all those our farmers also the students also building for the future generations and uh, at the end i certainly thank the organizers for invite inviting me for this webinar and also uh, to the uh, honorable vice chancellor Uh, director research dean and the organizer dr tushar patel dr dd patel dr kg pesa thank you very much thank you thank you so much sir for enlightening with your depth knowledge during your keynote address especially you have mentioned the importance of natural resource management beside you have emphasized on conservation of these resources at least we can put some efforts to further to stop the further degrades of that resources you have also highlight the concept of three c's we are highly ignited sir with your words and appreciations thank you again so much for your keynote address as well as accepting our proposal as a chief guest sir thank you now this is a time to inaugurate our e compendium of the webinars so i request to chief patron sir chief guest sir and president of the webinar to allowing us to release the compendium of the webinar लेकिन यस थैंक यू थैंक यू सर आई ने तुम्हें कहता ना जी बोलो साहब चालू है डॉक्टर जेपी पटेल सर व्हाट टू डू चालू है साहब चालू है यस सर दिस इज दिस इज द इनोग्रेशन ऑफ द आवर वेबिनार सर ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच वेरी गुड कांग्रेचुलेशंस थैंक यू थैंक यू सर द नेक्स्ट इवेंट इज to offer the certificate to the distinguished participants this is actually much awaited events of any webinar especially by the participants and it give the returns to the effort put by them it is a moment of joy it's a moment about accomplishment it's a moment of celebrations for this we have selected five representatives amongst the participants now i request dr dd patel sir to announce the name of the winners and i request honorable chief patron sir chief guest sir and other dignitaries to honor them with their certificate sir just allow me to share the screen sir i request dr dd patel sir h r ramani dr sunita saxena विशाल बोरसडिया डॉक्टर आरिफ हुसैन वानी शिल्पा राठौर ओके सो कॉन्ग्रेचुलेट all the participants who have successfully completed this 5 days marathon that is on sustainable agriculture through natural resource management again congratulate to all the distinguished participants thank you thank you all now i am requested dr jet p patel sir honorable vice chancellor nawsari agriculture university nawsari for his blessing and views on this valuable occasion sir you have always been our constant pillar of strength your words of wisdom have always enlightened us and have strengthened our step once again we all are excited 
to hear from you sir please sir uh very good morning to all <clears throat> uh in the valedictory function of the sustainable agriculture through nrm uh, which was organized by the our baruch college at this juncture uh, we have with us uh, dr pc sharma ji the director uh, icr central soil slnp research institute karnal uh, we have with us uh, dr sunil chaudhary ji our director of research uh, dr k g patel dean of the baruch college uh, dr c k timbadia extend our director of extension education and the principal uh, dr m k arvadia and dr j j pasatia who has also joined with us uh, this uh, valedictory function uh, the all the faculty members students and all the party participants on behalf of the nosari agriculture university i heartily welcome uh, first of all uh, dr p c sharma ji uh, the director uh, uh, on this uh, virtual platform and uh, first of all i congratulate all the participants as well as the organizing team of the baruch for successful completion of this uh, uh, webinar friends i also appreciate all the eminent speakers from the icr centers as well as saus of the country and mr matt new land from australia as well for their valuable guidance in this webinar during the inaugural function uh, deputy director general dr s k chaudhary has rightly narrated uh, the sustainability and their three pillars that uh, that is social sustainability yes i also heard this word social social environmental and economic uh, sustainability today dr sharma ji has also said his views on the natural resource management with the relation to upliftment of the socio economic status of the farming community also in our indian scripture it is very intelligently described to give the respect to the nature respect for the self and respect for the animal animal as well as respect for all the creature on this world as an ag agriculturist our aim is to manage the natural resource sustainably for achieving food nutritional environment and livelihood security in the country during this webinar most of the topics and issues related to nrm has been covered and discussed now it's time to get down to earth and take urgent action on solving those issues towards a sustainable inclusive and resource efficient path friends this will also provide a valuable information for local authorities for establishment of mid to long term agriculture development plans and for farming households to prepare their product we should develop the location specific cost effective eco friendly conservation and management te te technologies for higher input use efficiency agriculture productivity and profitability without deteriorating the natural resources in this seminar the majority of these topics related to nrm nrm have been discussed at length and for that i congratulate all the participants for their active participation in the webinar and advise them to apply the ideas you got from this webinar into the field and the society on behalf of nosari agriculture university i appreciate all the resource person for their kind support i congratulate the team of baruch campus especially the dean dr kg patel dr divyas dr tusar dr hiren and organizing team of the webinar for this successful arrangement sharing of this knowledge is continuous process for development and upliftment when whole world is facing the problem of covid-19 under such circumstances it is much useful to share the knowledge and ideas on online platform it's a matter of proud that even under the covid-19 our college of agriculture baruch has very successfully organized 10 webinars on a very realistic and useful topics uh, friends please keep it up and once again i congratulate to all the participants and the organizing committee 
थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच जय हिंद थैंक यू वेरी मच सर वी थैंक यू फॉर योर थॉटफुल वर्ड्स एंड ब्लेसिंग्स सर इट इज रियली रियली मीनिंगफुल टू ऑल ऑफ अस यू हैव नैरेटेड नेचुरल रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट टेक्निकली एज वेल एज फिलोसॉफिकली सर वी आर रियली एडमिटेड सर वी लुक फॉरवर्ड टू हियरिंग फॉर फॉर योर एडवाइस फॉर योर डायरेक्शंस एंड योर ब्लेसिंग इन फ्यूचर प्रोस्पेक्टिव आल्सो सर थैंक यू वंस अगेन सर नाउ अ सक्सेस ऑफ ईच इवेंट and its perspectives are made possible by many hands hearts and minds that are working together to express a words of appreciation and gratitude we have with us dr dd patel sir professor and head department of agronomy and convener of the webinar who would propose a word of thanks dr dd patel sir thank you uh, dr tushar patel at last on the valedictory function of this webinar honorable vice chancellor of navshar agriculture university dr chhat patel sir respected director icr central soil sanitary research institute dr uh, pc sharma sir uh, respected director of research of nio dr sr choudhary sir respected dean faculty of agriculture of navshar agriculture university dr kg patel sir here with us dr anil from cssri bharu center uh, Uh, all the deans and directors of navshar agriculture university especially over here with us dr c k timbaria sir dr m k arwadia sir dr j j pastakya sir uh, dr ruchira sukla and uh, dr r m nayak all the respected resource persons from icr institutes as well as saus senior professors scientists colleagues participants ladies and gentlemen good morning all of you as we come to the end of this webinar it is my great pleasure to deliver the word of thanks firstly i express my sincere gratitude to our honorable vice chancellor dr jhatri patel sir for his gracious presence in this webinar during inaugural as well as today's valedictory function sir your kind address with profound thoughts and perspectives for this webinar and light of us sir your today's keynote address is like always an intellectually stirring incisive and truly insightful as per your suggestion we we'll try to incorporate the recommendation for this webinar in our area of the research as well as in education on behalf of organizing committee i heartily thankful to our honorable vice chancellor dr jhatri patel sir for his kind presence in inaugural as well as today's valedictory function of this webinar as chief patron how can i forget the chief guest of the inaugural function of this webinar and honorable deputy director general nrm dr s k choudhary sir his kind presence in the inaugural function of the webinar as a chief guest and his thought provoking address enlighten us and gives new idea to do better in the field of agriculture on behalf of organizing committee i am highly thankful to honorable deputy director general nrm dr s k choudhary sir today here with us respected dr pc sharma sir chief guest of today's valedictory function and director uh, central soil sanitary research institute karnal sir your thought provoking address it self indicates your in depth knowledge sir you have narrated so many aspects of nature resource management as you are very busy with your different important responsibilities even though you have spared a special time for valedictory function for this webinar i heartily thankful to respected dr p c sharma sir on behalf of organizing committee i would also like to thank respected dr s r choudhary sir director of research of navshar agriculture university sir your today's keynote address is like always intelligent stirring incisive and insightful sir being a director of research you have lots of important responsibilities even though you spared a special time for both uh, uh, inaugural uh, as well as today's valedictory function sir that's true your caring nature for us sir we are again grateful to you i am also very grateful to respected dr kg patel sir dean faculty of agriculture of uh, bhruj i want to share with all of you that under this terrific condition of 
COVID-19 under the guidance of Dr. K. G. Patel, sir, uh, we have had a successfully organized 10 webinars. Sir, you have personally taken care of each and every activity of webinar that lead to the splendid success of this webinar. I am thankful to you, Dr. K. G. Patel, sir, on behalf of organizing committee. I am also thankful to the resource persons and eminent personalities from ICR Institute and SAUs, especially respected Dr. Uh, Himansu Patak sir, Director, Aerobatic Stress Management uh, Institute uh, from Biomati, respected Director of Research at Dibi Nagar University of uh, uh, University, uh, Dr. Ajit Singh Nair sir, Dr. N. Ravi Shankar from Mordipuram, Dr. Chinna Muthu from Tamil Nadu, Dr. Anil Dixit sir from uh, Raipur, Dr. N. K. Sarma sir from Dehradun, Dr. Kadent Kari sir from Dharwad, Dr. Y.P. Singh sir from Lucknow, Dr. R.A. Chad from Vasad, Dr. Sekharappa from Dharwad, Dr. D.M. Jetwa from Junagar, Dr. Lalit Mahatma and Mr. Matt Newland from Melbourne, Australia and all the resource persons. I am also grateful to respected all the university officers, especially Dr. Karwadia, Dr. Srivastava sir, Dr. Pastagya sir, Dr. Timbaria sir, Dr. Nayak sir, uh, to be here with us on this validity function of the webinar. I am also thankful to Dr. Anil from Regional Center uh, of CSSRI Bharuj to be here with us. Uh, how can I forget the heart of this webinar, all the participants across the country and globe. I am heartily thankful to you on behalf of Organizing Committee, College of Agriculture, Naushar Agriculture University, Bharuj. Your active participation made this webinar alive and success. Again, I heartily thankful to all the participants. I also thankful to all the members of Department of Agronomy of this college, Dr. Tusar, Dr. Hiran, Dr. Rad, Dr. Niran, Dr. Swapnil, Dr. Vaishali, Dr. Manish, Mukesh Pai and Dhawal. I am also thankful to all the members of various committee of this webinar. I am also thankful to Dr. Alokji and Urvashi and IT department of university for their kind support. I am also thankful to those whose names are wished but directly or indirectly help us in arrangement and contributed in other ways for success of this webinar. Once again, thank you very much to all of you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you once again, all the participants. Uh, distribute participants, you all are requested to uh, continue to bear with the WhatsApp groups so, uh, till the certification ceremony is complete. So kindly bear with uh, these WhatsApp groups. Okay, so with the permissions of chair, uh, we declare this uh, validatory sessions and this webinar become uh, over. However, before, before, we, before we discontinue the events, I invite all the dignitaries all the participants, all the invitees guests to switch on their uh, camera so we can take the glorious memory of the webinars. So please switch on your camera. So nice, so nice. Thank you, thank you everybody. Once again, thank you everyone. Hopefully uh, this uh, year become much better with respect to health as we all face very serious issue of COVID-19 pandemic, pandemic in previous years. So we wish that uh, this is somewhat much better than previous years. Once again, uh, I wish you a great year ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much.